Cantos one to three of Book five of the Ramayan of Balmiki. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by O123. Book five of the Ramayan of Balmiki. Translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. Canto One Hanuman's Leap. Does Ravan's foe resolve to trace the captive to her hiding place through airy pathways overhead, which heavenly minstrels visited with straining nerve and eager brows, like some strong husband of the cows? In ready might he stood prepared for the bold task his soul has dared. Over gem like grass that flashed and glowed, the banner like a lion strode. Roosed by the thunder of his tread, the beasts to shady coverts fled. Tall trees he crushed or hauled aside, and every bird was terrified. Around him loveliest lilies grew, pale pink and red and white and blue, and tints of many a metal lent the light of varied ornament. Gandharvas changing forms at will, and Yakshas roamed the lovely hill, and countless serpent gods were seen, where flowers and grass were fresh and green. As some resplendent serpent takes his pastime in the best of lakes, so on the mountain's woody height the banner wandered with delight. Then, standing on the flowery sod, he paid his vows to saint and god. Sayambu and the sun he prayed, and a swift wind to lend him aid, and Indra, sovereign of the skies, to bless his hardy enterprise. Then once again the chief addressed the banners from the mountain crest. Swift as a shaft from Rama's bow, to Ravan's city will I go, and if she be not there, will fly, and seek the lady in the sky. Or if in heaven she be not found, will he the bring the giant bound? He ceased, and mustering his might, sprang downward from the mountain height, while shattered by each mighty limb, the trees unrooted followed him. The shadow on the ocean cast by his vast form, as on he passed, flew like a ship before the gale, when the strong breeze has filled the sail. And where his course the banner held, the sea beneath him raised and swelled. Then guards and all the heavenly train poured flowerets down in gentle rain. Their voices glad Gandharvas raised, and saints in heaven the banner praised. Fain would the sea his succour lend, and Ragu's noble son befriend. He, moved by chill for Rama's sake, the hill Manaka thus bespake. O strong Manaka, heaven's decree, in days of old appointed thee, to be the Sura's bar and keep the rebels in the lowest deep. Thou goddest those whom heaven has caused, lest from their prison house they burst, and standest by the gates of hell, their limitary sentinel. To thee is given the power to spread, or spring above thy watery bed. Now, best of noble mountains, rise, and do the thing that I advise. Even now, above thy buried crest, Flies mighty Hanuman, the best of banners, moved for Rama's sake, a wondrous deed to undertake. Lift up thy head that he may stay and rest him on his weary way. He heard, and from his watery shroud, as bursts the sun from autumn cloud, rose swiftly, crowned with plant and tree, and stood above the foamy sea. There, with his lofty peaks upraised, bright as a hundred suns, he blazed. 
and crest and crack of burnished gold flashed on the flood that round him rolled the banner taught the mountain rose a hostile bar to interpose and like a wind-swept cloud overdrew the glittering mountain as he flew then from the falling hill rang out a warning voice and joyful shout again he raised him high in air to meet the flying banner there and standing on his topmost peak in human form began to speak best of the banner's noblest line a mighty task, O chief, is thine. Here for a while I pray thee light, And rest upon the breezy height. A prince of Ragu's line was he, Who gave his glory to the sea, Who now to Rama's envoy shows High honour for the debt he owes. He bade me lift my buried head, Uprising from my watery bed, Then woo the banner chief to rest, a moment on my glittering crest refresh thy weary limbs and eat my mountain fruits for they are sweet i too o chieftain know thee well three worlds thy famous virtues tell and none i win with thee may vie who spring impetuous through the sky to every guest though mean and low the wise respect and honour show and how shall I neglect thee, how, slight the great guest, so near me now? Son of the wind, it is thine to share, the might of him who shakes the air, and, for he loves his offspring, he is honoured when I honour thee. Of yore, when Creta's age was near, the little hills and mountains flew, wherever they listed, borne on wings, more rapid than the feathered kings. But mighty terror came on all, the gods and saints who feared their fall. And Indra in his anger rent, their pinions with the balls he sent. When in his ruthless fury he levelled his flashing bolt at me, the great-souled wind inclined to save and laid me knit the ocean's wave. Thus by the favour of the sire, I kept my cherished wings entire, and for this deed of kindness done, I honour thee, his noble son. O oh, come, thy weary limbs relieve, and honour thee from me receive. I may not rest, the banner cried, I must not stay or turn aside, Yet pleased am I, thou noblest hill, And as the deed accept thy will. Thus, as he spoke, he lightly pressed, With his broad hand the mountain's crest, Then bounded upward to the height Of heaven rejoicing in his might, And through the fields of boundless blue The pathway of his father flew. God's saints and heavenly birds beheld that flight that none had paralleled. Then to the Nagas mother came, and thus addressed the sun-bright dame. See, Hanuman with venturous leap would spring across the mighty deep, a banner prince, the wind god seed, come, Sudasa, his course impede, in rakshish form thy shape disguise terrific like a hill in size let thy red eyes with fury glow and high as heaven thy body grow with fearful tasks the chief defy that we his power and strength may try he will with guile thy hold elude or own thy might by thee subdued pleased with the grateful honours paid the godlike dame their words obeyed Clad in a shape of terror, she sprang from the middle of the sea, and with fierce accents that appalled all creatures to the banner called, Come, Prince of Banners, doomed to be, my food this day by heaven's decree, such boon from ages long ago, to Brahma's favouring will I vow. She ceased, 
and Hanuman replied, By shape and tread unterrified. Brave Rama, o'er his metal spouse, Lodged in the shade of Dundak's boughs. Thence Ravan, king of giants, stole, Sita, the joy of Rama's soul. By Rama's high behest to her, I go a willing messenger, And never should stem hinder one Who toils for Dasarath's son. First captive Sita will I see, And him who sent and waits for me. Then come and to thy will submit, Yea, by my truth I promise it. Nay, hope not thus thy life to save, Not such the boon that Brahma gave, Enter my mouth, was her reply, Then forward on thy journey high, Stretch, wide stretch thy jaws, exclaimed the banner chief, to ire inflamed. And as the Rakshas near him drew, ten leagues in height his stature grew. Then straight her threatening jaws between, a gulf of twenty leagues was seen. To fifty leagues he waxed, and still her mouth grew wider at her will. Then smaller than a thumb became, Shrunk by his power, the banner's frame. He leaped within, and turning round, Sprang through the portal at a bound. Then hung in air a moment while, He thus addressed her with a smile, O oh, Duxa's child, farewell at last, For I within thy mouth have passed. Thou hast the gift of Brahma's grace, I go, the metal queen to trace. Then to her former shape restored, she thus addressed the banner lord. Then forward to the task and may success and joy attend thy way. Go and the rescued lady bring in triumph to her lord and king. Then host sub spirits as they gazed the daring of the banner praised. To the broad fields of Eter fast, Garur's royal self he passed. The region of the cloud and rain, loved by the gay Gandharva train, where amid the birds that came and went, shone in Ra's glorious bow unbent. And like a host of wandering stars, flashed the high god's celestial cause. Fierce Singhika, who joyed in ill, And changed her form to walk her will, Descried him on his airy way, And marked a banner for her prey. This day at length, the demon cried, My hunger shall be satisfied. And at his passing shadow caught, Delighted with the cheering thought, The banner felt the power that stayed, And held him, as she grasped his shade. Like some tall ship upon the main, That struggles with the wind in vain. Below, above, his eye he bent, And scanned the sea and firmament. High from the briny deep unreared, The monster's hideous form appeared. Sugriva's tale, he cried, is true. This is the demon dire to view, of whom the banner monarch told, Whose grasp a passing shade can hold. Then, as a cloud in rain-time grows, His form, dilating, swelled and rose, Wide as the space from heaven to hell, Her jaws she opened with a yell, And rushed upon her fancied prey With cloud-like roar to seize and slay. The banner, swift as thought compressed, His borrowed bulk of limb and chest, And stood with one quick bound inside, The monstrous mouth she opened wide. Heed like the moon, when Rahu draws, The orb within his ravening jaws. Within that ample cavern pant, The demon's form he tore and rent, And from the mangled carcass freed, came forth again with thought-like speed. Thus with his skill the fiend he slew, then to his wounded stature grew, 
the spirit saw the demon die and hailed the banner from the sky well hast thou fought a wondrous fight nor spared the fiend's terrific might on on perform the blameless deed and in thine every wish succeed never can they fail in whom combine such valour thought and skill as thine pleased with the praises as they sang again through fields of air he sprang and now his travail well nigh done the distant shore was almost won before him on the margin stood in long dark line a waving oud and the fair island bright and green with flowers and trees was clearly seen and every babbling brook that gave her lord the sea a tribute wave he lighted down on lumbar's peak with tinted metal stain and streak and looked where lanka's splendid town shone on the mountain like a crown canto two lanka the glorious sight a while he viewed then to the town his way pursued around the banner as he went breathed from the oud delicious scent and the soft grass beneath his feet with gem-like flowers was bright and sweet still as the banner nearer drew more clearly rose the town to view the palm her fan-like leaves displayed priolas lent their pleasant shade and mid the lower greenery far conspicuous rose the covidar a thousand trees mid flowers that glowed hung down their fruits delicious load and in their crests that rocked and swayed sweet birds delightful music made and there were pleasant pools whereon the glories of the lotus shone and gleams of sparkling fountains steered by many a joyous water bird around in lovely gardens grew blooms sweet of scent and bright of hue and lanka seat of raven's sway before the wandering banner lay with stately domes and turrets tall encircled by a golden wall and moats whose waters were aglow with lily blossoms bright below for cedar's sake defended well with bolt and bar and sentinel and rakshasas who roamed in bands with ready bows in eager hands he saw the stately mansions rise like pale hued clouds in autumn skies where noble streets were broad and bright and banners waved on every height her gates were glorious to behold rich with the shine of burnished gold a lovely city planned and decked by heaven's creative architect fairest of oddly cities meet to be the god's celestial seat the banner by the northern gate thus in his heart began to bait our mightiest host would strive in vain to take this city on the main a city that may well defy the chosen warriors of the sky a city never to be won even by the arm of ragu's son here is no hope by guile to win the hostile hearts of those within it were vain to war or bribe or so dissension mid the banner foe but now my search i must pursue until the metal queen i view and when i find the captive dame make victory mine only aim but if i wear my present shape how shall i enter and escape the rakshas troops their guards and spies and sleepless watch of cruel eyes the fiends of giant rays who hold this mighty town are strong and bold and i must labor to elude the fiercely watchful multitude i in a shape to mock their sight 
must steal within the town by night blind with my art the demon's eyes and does achieve my enterprise how may i see myself unseen of the fierce king the captive queen and meet her in some lonely place with none beside her face to face when the bright sun had left the skies the banner dwarfed his mighty size and in the straightest bounds restrained the bigness of a cat retained then when the moon's soft light was spread within the city's walls he sped canto three the guardian goddess there from the circling ramparts height he gazed upon the wondrous sight broad gates with burnished gold displayed and courts with turquoises inlaid with gleaming silver gems and rows of crystal stairs and porticoes in semblance of a rakshas dame the city's guardian goddess came for she with glances sure and keen the entrance of a foe had seen and thus with fury in her eye had dressed him with an angry cry who art thou what has led thee say within these walls to find thy way thou mayst not enter here in spite of raven and his warrior's might and who art thou the banner cried by form and frown unterrified why hast thou met me by the gate and she me thus infuriate he ceased and lanka made reply the guardian of the town am i who watch for ever to fulfil my lord the rakshas monarch's will but thou shalt fall this hour and deep shall be thy never-ending sleep again he spoke in spite of thee this golden city will i see her gates and towers and all the pride of street and square from side to side and freely wander where i please amid her groves of flowering trees on all her beauties sate mine eye then as i came will homeward high swift with an angry roar she smote with her huge hand the banner strode the smitten banner raised impelled with fist upraised the monster felled but quick repented steered with shame and pity for a vanquished dame when with her senses troubled weak with terror thus she strove to speak oh spare me thou whose arm is strong O oh, spare me and forgive the wrong the brave that law will never transgress that spares a woman's helplessness here best of banners brave and bold what brahm herself of yore foretold beware he said the fatal hour when thou shalt own a banner's power then is the giant's day of fear for terror and defeat are near now banner chief overcome by thee i own the truth of heaven's decree for cedar's sake will ruin fall on raven and his down and all and of cantos one two and three